Hello and welcome, Mark Homer here. Now, I'm gonna talk about paying your mortgage off or not paying your mortgage off, as may be the case. This very much depends on how disciplined you are, how able you are to take that little bit extra that you might get by paying an interest only mortgage rather than a, a full capital and interest, otherwise known as capital repayment mortgage. If you can take that little bit of extra money and invest it elsewhere, you'll probably end up a lot better off over the long run. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I told this story on a previous video. I got some of my numbers wrong. Uh, you know, I don't have a mortgage calculator in my head. A few comments below, bad advice, this guy's an idiot, various things. So we're doing the whole video again. I've been on a mortgage calculator this morning. I've worked all the numbers out precisely. Uh, I've got them all written down. I'm gonna give you all these numbers so that you can understand precisely what you should do in terms of your own mortgage. And that might be on your home, and it could be on investment properties. It might be on some buy-to-let properties, some residential, uh, or maybe commercial buildings. But before I get started, can you like and subscribe? In 1965, my uncle Chris bought his first house. Uh, he would have been about 25. He was working for the electricity board at the time uh, and he bought his first house for £3,000. Back in 1965, there was no choice. You had to go on capital repayment. So he was paying interest every month and he was paying capital repayment on his mortgage. Very much in, in, in the same way that most people would in this country today. At that time, he was earning around a thousand pounds a year. So that was his annual salary. Obviously he was then taxed on that. He took a mortgage out on that 3000 pound house that he bought, he took a mortgage out of 75%, which was 2,250 pounds. Clearly back then, 2,250 pounds was worth a hell of a lot more than it is today because of all the inflation that has taken place over that period. Uh, and therein lies the story behind this story. So back then, the building society interest rate that he was paying on his mortgage was 6.5%. It was quite a bit higher than it is today. Uh, Bank of England base rate was about 6%, um, and he took out a 20-year mortgage. You'll notice today that mortgages have got longer and longer. As house prices have increased and you need to borrow more and more, Lenders um, have let you borrow the money over a longer period of time. You often see 35, 40 year mortgages. Back then he was on a 20 year mortgage, so he borrowed 2,250 pounds for this 3,000 pound purchase. His monthly payment on this mortgage was 17 pounds a month. That was the capital and the interest. And what he did all the way through those 20 years, he paid that 17 pounds per month. That 17 pounds a month was a significant part of his wages. In fact, if he was earning a thousand pounds a year, and let's say he lost something like a quarter of it to tax, he was getting net something like 55 pounds a month. And, and of that, 17 was going in his mortgage payment. All through those 20 years, he paid his mortgage every month diligently, because that's how he was. My uncle Chris made sure all the bills were paid. Uh, and at the end of the 20 years, he paid the mortgage off and he owned the house outright. So there was no mortgage on the property. So over those 20 years, he was paying the 17 pounds a month, the monthly mortgage payment, which was the capital and the interest, which was a good portion of the 55 pounds a month that he got in net salary after tax, you know, in his bank account. But actually of that 17 pounds a month, 12 pounds 20 of it was interest and the rest about five pounds was repayment. So let's just look at if he hadn't paid the capital and the interest and that extra sort of five pounds a month where he would have been. Well, every month he'd have another five pounds to spend on all sorts of things. And that might've been meals out, might've contributed to holidays abroad, uh, could have been sort of clothes for the kids, toys, whatever that might've been. Because of course, five pounds back then was worth a lot more. In fact, I've had a look, and back then you could get a portion of fish and chips for 20 pence in 1965. You could buy a new transistor radio for seven pounds. Now, of course, you could probably get a transistor radio now for maybe not a lot more than that. But back then, uh, a transistor radio was a big deal. You had to save up a long time to get that. A holiday abroad, to the sun, you know, on, on, on a jet, might have been about 30 pounds. 
Um, so, you know, a few months worth of saving, um, not having to pay that repayment would have meant that they could have gone to the Spain for a week on a, on a nice holiday. Uh, and I, I've looked at the little advert from 1965, it would have been a good hotel on a good airline. But some of you would say, ah, but after 20 years, he would still have that £2,250 um, mortgage and he would need to repay that. He'd still be sort of saddled with all that debt. But the reality is the effect of inflation over those 20 years was huge because it compounds. His salary went up by such a, a rate that at the end of the 20 years he could have paid off that £2,250 with one month's salary. The effect of the inflation over the 20 years was huge. But of course, over those 20 years, he had all those extra meals out, all that extra fish and chips. He could have had a few extra transistor radios, um, maybe a, a TV, uh, you know, clothes, toys, whatever that might have been. So is this right for everybody? No, it's not right for everyone because not everybody is disciplined enough to take the extra five pounds a month or whatever that is in today's money and to invest it wisely. And you put that into ISAs, maybe into equities, or maybe into investment property, you could get many times the return that you would do versus offsetting a mortgage today, which would be more like 2%. So for those that are disciplined enough, it would probably be a better route. If you're really not that disciplined and you're not gonna invest the money and you're not gonna use it for good use, then maybe a repayment mortgage is the right thing. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. If you wanna see any of more of my stuff, I'm on Facebook, um, I'm on Twitter, and our website is www.progressiveproperty.co.uk. Hope that's been of use to you. That's been Mark Homer, over and out.